Yeah, always, Tammy. With Real Southern Woman. I just picked up my dogs and they're helping me drive and so I thought I'd leave. So we're almost home. Here's Happy. She's been to the groomers. Happy, you can't get in my face when I'm driving. And Marcy's licking my arm. You can't see her and so does on the little hump. I told them they didn't have their seatbelts on. They allowed to get a ticket. They need their seatbelts on. I'll let y'all see. Soda? I can't see you, baby. Now maybe y'all can see them. Anyway, I'll show you. I'll show them up to you close once we get in the driveway. We're almost home. Hope y'all are having a blessed day. It is a Wednesday. Chris went to get his truck serviced, and when he got there, they told him he needed brakes. He was supposed to go pick up the dogs for me because he has the leashes and the harnesses, um, but he didn't. Hold on a minute. Now Chris is calling me. All right, let me fix this thing. I'm in my neighborhood now. Um, anyway, he had all the stuff to go get him, and I didn't. So when I got there, I was like, I don't even have a leash to put on them. And the girl helped me put them in the car. My daddy said, Lord, you must not have nothing to do if you're just out taking your dogs to the groomers. I said, well, I guess so. I said, I got plenty to do. That's why I had to take them to the groomers instead of me doing it. Y'all know I used to do my dogs all the time when I first started this show. Um, but I have gotten them groomed. I got them groomed right before Christmas and then today. So it lasts for a while. But hey, Tony and Debbie. All right, I'm about to pull in the driveway. Then I'm going to let you see them individually. My crazy neighbor out on his little scooter. It's like a dune buggy type thing that he drives around on. You gotta watch for him. He just flies on that thing down our street. Are y'all gonna cry? Can y'all cry for him? Y'all gonna cry because you're home? First, y'all got to speak to my ladies. Here, let them see you. Here's Happy all cleaned up, smelling good. They brush their teeth and everything. Here's Soda all cleaned up, smelling good. And here's my little Marcy. All cleaned up and smelling good. They all clean. They all smell so much better when I get them groomed. Y'all gotta wait for the garage door to close. can't unleash the beasts until the garage door closes. <gasps> it's about closed. Are y'all ready? Go. Go. So anyway, I just thought I'd t see, let y'all see what I'm doing. Today, me and Chris, um, now somebody's calling me. I think it connected to my internet. Anyway, I cooked some today. Y'all, I got some new cookware in the mail. It's, it's new news, good news, okay? This is our huge garage. Our garage is enormous. It's not like that where we're going, though. But anyway, um, I'll let y'all see Amy's car. She finally got a car. That's her car. And it is an Elantra... So, I don't know if May will get one because that was her second wreck. There's my old car that I love so much. I gotta make sure. I don't think I turned that light off. I left the light on in it, y'all. Are any of y'all like me and forget what you're doing? I turned this little light on up here. We'll turn it off. Okay. So, anyway, there's Amy's car. But our garage is huge. See how big the garage is and it's full of stuff? And we're going to have a lot to move when we move. And look, you see this pole that's hung up in our garage? Chris hung it from chains. See the chains? He hung up this pole so that when I have a garage sale, 
I can hang clothes on this. This actually come from our old, um, what do you call those things the kids jump on? Trampoline. Trampoline. So they were the poles. They were the poles from our trampoline. So if you ever get rid of a trampoline, save the poles. Hang them from the top of the garage so you can have a good yard sale. Anyway, I made fried cube steak today that I, uh, that I got to post. Um, and I got this new cookware. I'm going to go ahead and show y'all a sneak peek of it. And then I'm going to sign off. Y'all know I have Solid Master cookware. And you know what mine looks like. Let me go over here and get a piece. So that we can compare the two. I'll get my big pot. Okay. In, on my website, I had picked out... Let me tell y'all. On my website... If you go to cookware, my presidents, the things that play, and I gotta turn it down. Chris has been watching it all day. Let me turn it down. Anyway, my cookware is called Salad Master, and it costs thousands of dollars. So I went online on Amazon and I tried to find a product that I felt like would be comparable to Salad Master. I am so impressed. Before I sold, but I mean, I had it on there, but I hadn't, you know, bought any to see if it really compared. So, I'm going to show y'all this. I could not believe it. That's an old salad master. Okay. And this one is an old salad master. Actually, that's an older, this is an older uh, top. I've even got a, a newer top in here. I might have took it down to the beach. I kind of went half and half on my stuff. No, that's the old top, too. I got two different ones, okay? This is the older lid. Salad Master from up 10 years ago. I got that on eBay. And this is my lid from the year 2000, okay? This is my big boiler. This is what I ordered. It's actually heavier than that one. But I couldn't believe this. I'm going to show you all this. You see that on the bottom of it? It is a T304 surgical stainless and it says it's a nine element, which is, it's nine ply stainless steel. Um, this is a piece of my old 2000 Salad Master. Year 2000. And we probably paid about 2000 for the set. Back then, in the year 2000. This is the bottom of that. Can you believe that? Do you see how that looks? This is theirs. That's my new one I got today. $250 a set. This is my old Salad Master. It has to be the same company that makes it. The handles are absolutely identical. Let me turn it around. So if you've always wanted Salad Master and you've never had the money to pay for it, look at that. How much they look alike. And you've never had the money to pay for it. This is very comparable to my Salad Master. So comparable that there's the Salad Master with five ply. This is the new stuff with nine ply. It's probably going to be better, actually, than my Salad Master. And I paid $250 for it. I'm kind of aggravated, y'all, because I bought a couple of pieces of Salad Master after I started the show. I bought a couple of pieces of Salad Master off eBay and spent a lot of money on it. Just so I would have a couple of extra saucepans. But the more I thought about it and thought about it, I thought, you know what? I'm not going to direct my viewers to go buy something. 
um, unless I really know what it looks like. And so I got it just so that I would feel a peace of mind. My sister needs some cookware, so me and her are sharing it. I'm going to show you what I'll come in the set. I'm going to do a little video on it later. But you get this big pot. Um, this is old stuff. Sorry, y'all. You also get this. You can sit this on top of there, like if you got something tall in there, like a roast or something. You've got the small pot, like this. You get... It did not come with a steam basket like mine did. I will say that. But it does come with a double boiler. So, you got this you can cook in. Sorry. You got that you can cook in. This one's actually heavier than, than this one. But that sits down in there, and you've got a dub, double boiler. And, of course, you got the lids for all, piece, all the pieces. Uh, the large lid is actually in my dishwasher already. I'm already using it. Um, and I've already used the large skillet. You get a large skillet, too, y'all. It's in the sink. So, you get that large skillet. It's really big. Um, I have never been one, though, I'll be honest with you. I really have never been one that likes a stainless steel skillet. Because most everything I make in a skillet, just like when I made my cube steak today, I use stainless steel. Stainless steel is great for boiling your vegetables and cooking vegetables and different things like that. But I'm not, I'm, I just don't like to fry in it. Okay? Uh, but you can deep fry in it, and you can fry in it if you're using a lot of grease. But if you're using stainless steel, and you fry up some cube steak, uh, parts of it around the edge are going to turn black and burn. Not your cube steak, but I'm just talking about your drippings. When if you have it in a nonstick skillet or an iron skillet, that don't normally happen as bad. So it's easier to use your drippings and stuff if you don't use the stainless steel to fry in, in my opinion. Now, if you got it in enough oil, like fried chicken or something, it's probably fine. But I wanted uh, y'all to see this. The way this stuff works is, I used to use this, you know, like this to make my cream potatoes every single time. When I was young and I first got this stuff, I did it every time. So I put my potatoes in there. I'd cover it with water. I just love these. Aren't they pretty? And then what you do is you put your put it on the stove top. You put your lid on it. Okay? And then this has got an open and a close. So you put it on the stove top. You put it on medium. And as soon as the steam starts coming out of the top and it starts to whistle, you close it. When you close it, you can see... That covers up that hole, and it forms a seal, and it's almost like pressure cooking, but not quite. But if you use this to make your peas or your cream potatoes or whatever you're making, um, your vegetables will get done quicker because they're kind of under pressure cooking. Uh, it's not a pressure cooker, but it's kind of like in between the two. But I really... Um, Really, really love this stuff. I have used it since the year 2000, the set that I have. And there's my old boiler. And um, and I love it. And the lids do... Uh, the Salad Master, the way that it works, is this thing shimmies when I'm cooking. And some of y'all have heard that on the videos. See? So if your mama had this, she would... You knew that sound. Something was cooking on the stove. Um, she's asking 10 inch. Oh, are y'all talking about my, uh, let's see, cast iron? Um, my cast iron, y'all, is uh, 10 inch. I never had a 12 inch. Um, so what I use is a 10 inch. And it just is, um, here, let me show you. I made cornbread in my skillet today. Me and Chris already made cornbread. This is my 10-inch with the 3-inch side. And you can buy this on the website and have it delivered, and it's heavy, okay? And then 
my iron skillet look my husband washed it and he didn't put it on the stove and dry it like he's supposed to but this is my 10 inch and see it's all messed up on the bottom i don't even know where i got this thing but you know what that's from that's from people this is not something i've had for a long time uh that is from i don't know where i got this i might have got it at a yard sale or something like that because I had a whole set and something happened. Um, anyway, that's where somebody had the, had it really, really hot. And they, they throw it in the sink and they run cold water on it. That will happen right there. It doesn't hurt it. Everybody's like, oh, you're going to hurt your cast iron. You can't hurt cast iron. It's cast iron, for heaven's sakes. You can hurt the finish on it. See my pretty finish on mine? Looks good, don't it? So anyway... I've showed y'all how to do your cast iron. I've showed y'all how to uh, dry it. All you gotta do is dry it on the stove. Get it good and dry. Wipe a little oil in it. Put it on low and let it sit there for a while. 20 or 30 minutes. And it'll have a really nice seal on the bottom. Okay. Only thing that's going to take the seal off the bottom of your cast iron is not soap. It's not. It's not like you're going to pour ammonia or something crazy in it. My lipstick looks crazy. It's... Uh, acid tomatoes you fill your cast iron full of tomatoes or you fill your cast iron full of cherries like to make a cherry filling i did that one time anything that has a lot of acid in it like fruit that's why you got to be real careful making the pineapple upside down cake in a cast iron because pineapples have acid you just got to be careful and so, if you're going to use it for something like that, remember, you got to reseal it when you get done. Because it will affect it. But just regular dish soap ain't going to hurt it. I've been washing my dish soap my whole life. And like I said, that's not uh, my new one, my brand new one that a viewer actually bought me is uh, down at the St. Mary's. I took one down there and I kept this one here. And I think this one is the older one that my neighbor down in Pensacola, it looks good on the bottom, that my neighbor down in Pensacola gave me. It was her mother, mother's. So this is a really old one. And mine don't have a name on them or they're not stamped. But they've been well used, you can tell. I use my cast iron. This one don't have any kind of name on it or stamp. This one's in pitiful shape. But I still use it every day because the inside's beautiful. Okay. Um, I've been told, y'all, that... Uh, wait a minute. I have been told that... What was I going to say? I can't even remember what I was going to say about my cast iron. Oh, I've been told that if you have a cast iron skillet and it's really bad, in really bad shape, and it's really nasty on the inside and it looks terrible, if you got an oven that does a self-clean, now I haven't tried it, but they say that you can put it in your oven when you do the self-clean. Y'all know how hot the oven gets. That's how I clean my grates, and I always have. If I take my grates when I have a gas stove, I put them inside the stove on the racks when I clean my stove. That way it cleans all that nasty stuff off the grates and you don't have to scrub it. Okay? So you can do the same thing with your iron skillet. You can throw it in there. If you ever burn anything in these, no kidding. If you ever burn anything in these or anything sticks to them, all you got to do is put it in some water and let it soak and it'll just peel right up. Now, if you really cook something on it and burn it to where it's charcoal burned, you just put uh, baking soda in it and cover the whole bottom with baking soda. Put enough water in it that that baking soda can, you know, simmer. You put it on the stove and you let that baking soda simmer for a good 10 minutes. Then you turn it off and it should, if you take a spoon and you just scrape it it should just come right off so um lots of times when we think we've ruined something uh you can actually get it off pretty easy if you just know the tricks the next time i burn something because yeah i burn something every once in a while 
I'll see if Chris will video me cleaning it up. But I sure ain't gonna burn it on purpose. But y'all, that cast iron always looks pretty. It always looks brand new. And if you use Barkeeper's Friend on it, uh, my old pants can look just, your old pants can look just about as pretty as the new ones. This is my, this is my old one. See it? Now, and I haven't cleaned it in a while, so you can see the water lines and stuff in it. And then this is the new one. But you can tell the rims are the same. I'm telling you, this cookware is nicer than my Salad Master. It's thicker. It's heavier. It's got this nice thick bottom, even on the larger piece and not just the smaller ones. My Salad Masters are like this, but the big boiler is not. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. I hope y'all have enjoyed seeing me today and uh, what I'm up to. We had black eyed peas for lunch with uh, cornbread and fried cube steak because I told somebody on Facebook I'd make some fried cube steak. So I gotta post that. I gotta get in there and edit it. So let's see. Lisa says she loves Barkeeper's Friend. Scan your cookbook collection. You have lots of books. I clean mine in my self clean oven. Yep, see? I tried that and it caught on fire. We burn hours off in the yard when we were burning leaves. How could an iron skillet catch on fire, Lisa, unless you had it full of food? That don't make any sense. I just would have to, I don't know what happened with that, Lisa. That sounds crazy. Um, let's see. Y'all want to see my cookbooks? There's my cornbread from lunch. Um, I got this in that thrift store. When I took y'all in that thrift store, I've got the Pillsbury's Best of the Bake Off collection. It's an old book. It was um, Pillsbury's Best Bake Off. Best Thousand Recipes. It was made when women used to go and compete for the Pillsbury Bake Off. Look at these ladies and how they're dressed, y'all. They all got on their little aprons. They all got on the same apron to do the baking show. And this is the inside cover of it. Some of y'all may have this book. But I thought that was really neat. And it's copyrighted 1959. Okay? So I've got that one. And it's all baking, mostly desserts. Y'all know me and desserts. Um, another one that I like. Most of these I don't even like. Seriously. I like the Fanny Farmer cookbook. I like... Y'all see, I got a cholesterol cookbook. Best Loved Recipes of the American People. This is a good book. Let me show it to you. This book, Best Loved Re Recipes, is from 1973, but um, it's got just just standard recipes from people. Um, you know, it's a good book. It's a good little book. So, I like my Fanny Farmer. I like this one. One of my favorites. Let me show it to y'all before y'all leave. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just videoing and having to hold this dude. Um, is it this? Y'all know this is the one my mama had. Cooking for American Homemakers. Um, my mother used this every time, just about she cooked. Let me see if I can get it out. So this is an, one I always turn to. And this one is from, let's see, it's copyrighted 1969, which is the year I was born. It's, a, it's by the Culinary Arts Institute Encyclopedic Cookbook. I got, um, I actually gave mine, mama's to my brother, and I bought this one on eBay. Mama's binder was falling to pieces, and recipes were actually coming out of it, so I gave that to my brother. Um, she also used 
my mommy used this book and she used another book. And her other book is this book. You see it? This is what my mommy used. Um, you can see she wrote all over it. And she wrote all over the insides. But this is a dessert cookbook. It came with a whole series. There were desserts. And there was salads. And there was casseroles. Which I need to open up because so much of y'all like casseroles. I haven't even looked in that one. And there was meats. And so all the, the only one Mom ever used was this one. Because she catered and stuff. Uh, and these are from the Progressive Farmer Readers. So back in the day when all the farmers got, um, had a Progressive Farmer, I guess that was probably a magazine or something, uh, the ladies would send in their recipes and they created these books from all the farmers' uh, families. And so like when you open it up, see this one was from Owen Braswell in North Carolina. It's kind of like one of those church cookbooks, but a lot larger because it covers more of an area. There's one from Mississippi, one from Kentucky, Arkansas, French mint pie, Grand, uh, German chocolate pie, North Carolina, uh, and some of them are good. There's one from Georgia. She's from flipping Georgia. That'd be funny to say, wouldn't it? Coconut caramel. Um, anyway, it's just like a large church cookbook. It's what it amounts to, made by farmers. Um, so I like that one, of course. My go-to when I got married was Better Homes and Garden, but I had the paperback version and then I got this because I just had to have it when I went to Sam's Club. And let me just say, I do not like their new cookbook. It, I just don't like it. It's too fancy. I don't like the way they've done their recipes. They have all kind of alterations if you need this or if you want to do that. And that's just not my style. So I haven't opened this one maybe but twice. I don't really like it. I like the older Better Homes and Garden that's just a paperback. Much better to, to go by. Um, because they even changed the recipes, I noticed, which kind of bothers me. Let's see if I got any more. There's one more. This one is called The Glory of Southern Cooking. I bought that at a, uh, thrift store after I started the show to see, you know, if there's anything in there I thought I needed to do. This is the prettiest church cookbook I have. This one is called Seasoned with Grace, and it's from a Bellevue uh, church. This is beautiful. They spent some money making their books. And what I like about this one is that it has an introduction, of course, but I'll give you an example of one that I wanted to cook. I got them tagged. Okay, overnight coffee cake. So they give you... Um, like a scripture or a or something that someone said that's very encouraging and then um from the book hit by his grace and for his glory um is i guess the woman's prayer that's on that page um but every it's just such a beautiful beautiful cookbook and it does have one recipe per page which is what i tried to do in mine mine is not this pretty or it cost us a blasted fortune but another thing is that it has some uh i mean you don't have a lot of pictures but it does have the front you know like the sections have pictures but let me show you one more thing what i like about it is it has party ideas in the back and these are southern women that put this together so southern etiquette's part of it which i like and so when you open it up um, it gives you party, um, you know, like where, what to wear, wear your warm-ups and come for a super supper. And then they tell you how to decorate the table, what's the inspiration of the party, and then they give you a menu. I love this little cookbook. A Breath of Spring. Maybe I could do something like that in my new cookbook. My sister's working on it now. 
And then I've got to get it to a viewer named Carol. She's going to help us with the editing part. But see, there's a wedding shower. And she tells you what you need and how to do it. I just think that's really important because there's so many people that have no idea how to host anything anymore. And I'm not saying that to be ugly. It's just the truth. Um, most of the uh, most of you, unless you grew up in church, and now churches are even different. They don't get together as much. Um, they really don't know how to host a lot of people and what to do and how to lay stuff out and all that stuff. So I like them older cookbooks. I think they're neat. And then I got one more that's my favorite. Oh, and... Actually, I got two more. These are in the living room with me. Okay? This one is called Harvey's Best. This one was sent to me by a viewer. Um, she is the viewer, the same viewer that sent me my blending fork. And she has since passed away, which is very sad. Her name was Kimberly. And I remember her very well. She was very encouraging when I first started the show. She sent me several gifts in the mail. And she sent me the blending fork. If it weren't for Kimberly, all of us today would not be using those blending forks because it would not be in my kitchen. Harvey's Best. This was a local grocery store's cookbook. And so it has a lot of recipes you grew up eating because it was made I'm trying to find the copyright where were you made i don't know that it has a copyright but it talks about these guys that had the grocery store in it and their thing was incorporated in 1950 I think it probably come out in the late 60s as well. I really do. So this is where I got my strawberry cake recipe out of. I remember Mama making it, but I didn't know where. I've gotten several good recipes out of this. And then one more, and then I'm going to let y'all go. And then i got to call my husband because he's called me twice. Of course, my favorite cookbook is this one. <laughs> and this one. I'm just kidding they really are my favorite cookbooks because then you ain't got to go searching. Uh, you know, all the all the recipes are going to be good, right? Um, and then th I like this one. It's called Best of Country Cooking. If you were going to invest in one off of eBay or whatever, it would be this one, I think. It's called The Best of Country Cooking. Um, I like it. It was copyrighted in 1993. So just snap a picture of it or something. Um, it's got beautiful pictures in it, but it has got, it's uh, a rest, you know, it's got the recipe listed and who gave them the recipe. So it's another one of those where, you know, they, they went to different places and got recipes from different people. So like that one's in Georgia, but this one is in Minnesota. Okay. And I just like recipe books like that. I like recipe books where you get um, recipes from all over the place. And lots of times when I do a recipe, y'all, I don't even go by the recipe per se to a T most of the time. Most of the time I add or subtract something to it um, unless it's just perfect, just like it is. But most of the time I do change a little bit of stuff. If it doesn't go exactly right when I make it and I think it needs a half a cup of sugar, then... When I write the recipe, I add the sugar. Does that make sense? Um, I hope y'all have a blessed day. And I hope you've got to enjoy uh, my dogs. Happy. They cut your ears. And my cookbooks. But y'all, that salad master, this salad master like, well worth, well, well, well worth the money. And you got to get used to cooking in stainless steel if you're not real used to it. So you got to be careful and not um, burn stuff. I don't recommend frying in it, but I recommend doing everything else in it. Y'all see me use it every day when I do a video. Thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where you just never know what I'm going to do. 
I'll talk to y'all later. Love ya.